Hi, welcome to day three from the Wyoming BDR, crossing the state of Wyoming from the Montana border to the Colorado border. 1,000 miles, eight sections in eight days. We're Brian, Marisha, and Carlos, and we're attempting to be the first band to complete it. Day one was a tad challenging to say the least. That's bad, that's super bad. Day two brought only minor challenges, but delivered some spectacular scenery. So can a sprinter van do it? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. In today's video, we finally finished section seven, and as a surprise, even to us, tackle section six and section five. Good morning from day three. We're ready. Yep, day two was much better than day one. Covered over 100 miles. Can you believe it? I know, that's the longest on this whole one month. <laughs> We've only tried that about 10 times and never been able to accomplish it, and it happened yesterday. Anyone that travels with us anyway pretty much knows that would be impossible. Just ask double O. <laughs> well, if you, if you kind of off-road and overland or whatever, there's always something going on. We have high standards for ourselves to try to accomplish these trips in such a short period of time, it's kind of dumb to do it that way. Yeah, we put, uh, we put these very close timelines on something that we don't even know a sprinter van can do so but so far so good we're day three we're gonna say goodbye to our amazing amazing campsite that i really hope all the detail back there comes through make sure you watch this on television because there's some really cool stuff back there hopefully we see it carlos is gonna miss his little tiny shade patch and his sage bush that he's been eating for the last 24 hours. Just a really good perspective of where we camped last night. Wyoming is blowing our minds so far. Been through it a million times, but not like this. Any last words before we hit the roof? Yeah, man, we'll see you on the frickin' dirt. See you on the dirt. My awesome campsite. All right, here we go, day three. Arriving in Ten Sleep, Wyoming for refuel and maybe a refill on water and a little bit of food. Sweet. So this town started back in the day where there's ten guys sleeping. <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> Cute. Cutest thing ever. All right, I'm gonna go in Dirty Sally's. Get some st restocking. <laughs> I knew a girl named Sally once. Oh jeez. Sally's was a hit. We got apples, grapes. What else did we get? Cheese. Cheese. Now we're hitting the road. Hitting the road again. Cute town though. Uh, this is a nice road. Make up a little bit of time. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, right, right Let's into a slow curve. down there, buddy. You see the marine. Ryan You're making me nervous. Likes to drive 95 miles You're an hour. You're making me nervous when there's no bumps because he thinks this is a highway. This is the high plains. Marie. So we have high to have plains. words because he drives too fast. I was doing 40. Mm -hmm. I just went over a hump and sure jammed right into like a curve. Mm -hmm. right. We're gonna take a little time out here. You don't ever get bored on this whole route. Because, because of my driving. Well, because of Brian's driving. We crossed over into the Outback. We just entered Red Gulch, which is appropriately named. But yeah, a whole new landscape again. Don't mind me. Oh my God, Carlos. What is going Carlos, on here? look at the crickets. Oh, no. crickets. You want a snack, buddy? Oh, dude. <laughs> we all know how much Carlos loves crickets. God, you are so gross. Quit eating those. Carlos, you missed it, buddy. You were napping. You missed all the crickets. You would have loved it. It does, it looks like that big, big red rock in uh, the Outback. What was that called again? We're 
we're not going up that, are we? Like we're headed into a new landscape here pretty soon. I made him stop to go back so I could get a picture of that sign. That said what? That said don't stop or you're gonna get crushed by rocks. Airport. Yeah, okay, this... we'll just drive around it. We're gonna go on the landing Don't... strip. Yeah, that's the airport. We're on the runway. We're on the runway. We should probably get off the runway. It's very dangerous. Wanna, yeah, we don't want to put we don't want to put tire tracks in it. Uh uh. Landing aircraft. Uh -uh. This is the <laughs> luggage area. <laughs> luggage area right here where you check in. Oh, front door. Kind of. There you go. I mean, there's a lot of design that went into it. I do have to, this is international. Nonetheless, if you're thinking about flying in, you probably get your luggage pretty quick. We'll just drive where we need to go. It seems like around every corner we found a new landscape. Just today alone, we covered quite a few. Poison gas area, do not enter when lights are flashing. Hazardous gas operations in progress. Okay, well it's not flashing. You sure Maurice, it looks like it's glowing. <laughs> it's not flashing, I think we're good. All right. Probably don't want to mill around too long though. No. Maybe we should roll up the windows. We got maybe. our COVID masks, we're gonna be just fine. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> Hold your breath, Carlos. I don't know how long this is. Another new scenery. Poisonous gas flats, is what we like to call it. <laughs> uh, now we're in the desert. I don't even understand this state at all. This was kind of the Wyoming we were expecting, based on I-80 anyway. <laughs> all the days drive, Marie. All the days drive. Yep. Yeah, a lot going on in Wyoming. We're out of Shoshone. It's like a little oil and gas town, I guess. We've thrown down 124 miles. Check us out. Yeah, we're crushing it today. Uh, roads are smooth and we can go pretty fast. So that continues to be the case. If we can complete section four, we will be winning. We will be winning. Just shh. How this goes. Just, just be cool. Everyone, be cool. Right, we're just gonna play this by ear. I don't want to get too confident. <laughs> so far, easy peasy. And uh, we will. If anything changes, we'll catch oh, you back you'll, up. Yeah, you'll know. About it. You'll know. You'll know about it for sure. We have a whole new section of landscape. Now we're in prairies, rocky prairies, and towards the mountains. Yep, we are working our way towards those mountains. Probably where we'll be camping tonight because it is 91 degrees down here. Ooh. Antelopes is ripping. We're gonna have a stampede, Maurice. Stampede. Antelopes. Now those might be antelopes. Good job, antelopes. You wanna race? Don't get all hot and tired. Free range horsies. Oh my god, do we have carrots? We have apples. <gasps> Look at that one on the end. Most wild horses in Wyoming are located in this area of the state. The approximate 6,000 wild horses is a credit to the private landowners of this area who do not fence their land, thus allowing horses to wander as necessary for food, water, and shelter in the winter as nature provides. Did we mention how often the scenery changes around here? It's really hard to comprehend how alone we are. I mean, there is nothing. I think we've been driving a couple hours in this. And I've seen nothing. Let's film the town of Lander. Cute little town. Perfect for all your supplies. 
Whoa, that was my window. We just left Lander and are about to get back on trail into the Freak Mountains. Freaky. Sinks Canyon is what we're in, but that is part of the Freak Mountains. So yes. that's where we'll be tonight, sleeping. All right, hunting for night threes. Ooh, campsite. A little tight. Oh, this is tight-tastic. Yeah, it is. Ooh, we're good. Backing down this wouldn't be fun. But there is a turn off. Just jump that big boulder. There we go. Ooh. So we worked our way up this rocky little offshoot and found the perfect spot to camp for the night. Check out this other one really quick. Good morning and welcome to night three's campsite. Welcome to day four. And how do you keep a six month old puppy entertained? while constantly driving. So let him chew on dead things. Oh, good job, buddy. You're so strong. He gets his yaya's out in the morning for a couple of hours and then basically sleeps all day till we get to the next campsite with a couple breaks in between. Get it, buddy. You gotta get in the middle. So this is pretty typical of some rocky spots that don't look bad. Here's some scale. Uh, doesn't look bad, doesn't look bad. But if you're in a van, at least a stock, like the Rebel or something similar, these right here are just high enough that when you drop off the rock, it'll hit your skid plates. So if you are, going to do this trail, I would not do it without skid plates. You can only kind of put your tire here and you can only put your tire here. Just no matter if you're on this side or this side, you kind of can't avoid this rock. So you, we came down on this pretty hard. We actually, uh, it hit the, the battery that's mounted under the van. It's cased in steel, but it hit it so hard that it jammed it up through the floorboards. <laughs> of our sidestep. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be interesting to get it out when it's time to replace those batteries because it's jammed up probably a good half an inch. But our sight last night was pretty good. Next time we start day four with the goal to finish section five and explore the Carissa Mine and the old mining town of South Pass City. It is the smallest continually inhabited town in all of Wyoming. <laughs> Car Carlos found the only shady spot in the 100 mile radius. So will we complete the most remote BDR trail? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Adventure is calling.